Leo is going to follow them in. Okay. So this this back room is basically a bedroom. It has a plain wooden bed, uh, probably where probably the acolytes or maybe the uh, the head of uh, the church sleeps. The mattress has been totally ripped open, straw pulled out all over the place. The floor is strewn with all of the contents of the two wooden chests that you see in this room. And there's all kinds of priestly vestments, a lot of little personal knickknacks and, you know, belongings on the floor. And but something is definitely tore this place up. Huh. Are there any other exits? There is a there is a ladder uh, going up to another portion, probably going up to the steeple area, and you okay, can it's... you can actually hear the the bell ringing from the from the opening. Oh well, then I'll just go up the ladder. Okay, so you climb up the ladder, and it looks like there's another an- another ladder inside. Well, you can see as the you know. Another the one thing that you do see before you start climbing up are the ropes actually come down to where you guys are about about eye level, about chest level. Well, these ropes are bobbing up and down, so something or someone is are pulling these ropes, and you can just hear these bells are ringing away. So you climb up. There's another ladder. Well, on while you're on the second level, you start to hear like giggling and laughing and cackling. Definitely doesn't sound. It's it's very high pitched, that's for sure. And uh, I will say this: you do hear this. You do hear something. So I'm putting in see, into the uh, the combat tracker. Well, I'm putting it in chat, and you you hear something. But it doesn't look like anybody can hear it. Well, at least not Graven and Trayvon, because you two are actually inside of the temple. Yeah. But it's like a really high-pitched cackling and, and a lot of a lot of snorting and, and drooling involved, it sounds like. You can hear that? Yeah, you can. As you climb up to the you know, the the next level of the, the steeple area, and you still see the, the rope coming up and down and whatnot. And you can hear the bell as it gets louder. Yeah, you can you can start to hear that as you get to the second level. As Raven reaches up, out and he grabs one of the ropes. Okay. <laughs> and he's gonna uh, grab the rope and he's gonna do that. I mean, I'm sure you've done this as a kid. We take a rope yeah. and you kinda do the thing where it waves. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So he grabs the rope and he just he has with his massive shoulders pulls back and just jerks that whole thing. Give me a strength check. Okay. <laughs> uh, Curlio went into the temple after the about a round ago. Okay. <clears throat> so you'll be back. Uh, how about you as well, uh, Philo? Are you inside or are you still outside? Uh, Philo was actually going to go over to the inn and see if people had left in a hurry and taken some things with them or if the inn looks like it's been ransacked. Okay, I will get to you in just one second. No problem. So, so as you, <laughs> Graven, as you, <laughs> always Mister Clutch on the rolls. I love it. So as you <laughs> yank this rope, all of a sudden, before you, falls two green small humanoids, and you hear a ah, poof, and you hear a ah, poof, as two goblins. You basically yank them. <laughs> And they fall down through the the cavity in the middle of the floor, past you, and then you kind of look down, and then they are now prone on the ground below you. And there's two goblins there, and they kind of look at each other, and then look up at you, and they say, "Uh oh." That's universal for O S. <laughs> oh, but they kind of look up and see you as a dwarf, and they say. Uh oh! So, All right. everybody, roll initiative. You have two yeah. goblins there. <clears throat> uh. 
<laughs> what a what a clutch strength jack, man. I'm I'm telling you, 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 are, you are so clutch, man. All right. So it looks like everybody's rolled. All right, Trayvok, you are up first, and it looks like these two, these two goblins are standing up, and it looks like they're going to pull weapons and whatnot, you know, and they're yammering the whole time in a goblinoid that you just cannot understand, and of course they can't understand you either. All right, uh, Trayvok will kind of uh, step in there um, and uh, try to, you know, I don't know, just kind of nudge one so that they can't necessarily grab their weapons while he's Trayvok pulling out his Warhammer and he will go ahead and smash one of them. Okay. Um, Whoops. The, Oops. I didn't, I didn't make him visible. I'm so sorry yep. about that. <laughs> My bad. Right. My bad. Yeah, they're both uh, laying prone right in front of you, right where they fell down where the ropes are. Alright. Um, so I'll just go ahead and hit, uh, I guess, Brito. Oh, okay. oh <laughs> nice. I get to, right off the bat, I get to use the new sad trombone. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Uh, then uh, I guess that's it for me. All right. So it kind of chuckles as as you miss it, and it, it rolls out of the way. It <laughs> as it as it pulls its little weapon out, and it's going to try to give you in the shin or something. All right. So that's it for uh, for Trayvok. So let's go to Curlyoa. Curlyoa, what say you? Well, I, I hear some uh, uh, noises coming from that room that sound like combat. Yep. So I'm going to rush in. And I guess I'll just get... I'll come down here. There we go. That way, uh, Graven can get in there. They both and see I you will... slither in there, and they and they say, oh, oh, oh. They, they, They're looking at each other, and they're just... Amazed to see you know a snake person come coming inside of this room, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get you a a, a new token actually too. Yep. You're a pure blood, so don't you pretty much look uh, look like a person? I look I look mostly human, but if you examine me closely, you can see like my reptilian eyes and my forked tongue, and you know my my uh, certain teeth are like really long and sharp. He can give you a little sneaky lick. <laughs> oh, God. Do you want something like this? I want something like that. Uh, it's a little more reptilian, but uh, it's up to you. It's a little. I think that might be a little bit too much. <laughs> All right. I'll find something for you later. The, the cobra head, you know. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple of aunties. I just got to put bases on them for you. Okay. Well, I'm going to move down there, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to cast suggestion on uh, the one that hasn't been well. Nobody's been hit yet, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll cast suggestion on Vark who hasn't been attacked yet. Okay. Uh, and what so kind of activity DC. are you going to suggest on this thing? I'm going to say, "Oh, you're our friends. You want to help us." <laughs> Let's see. Will the creature be able to understand you if it doesn't? I say speak it in language? common. Yeah, it doesn't speak common, so I'm trying to see if it understands you. If even if it doesn't speak the language that you speak, yeah, it can. It it has to be able to hear and understand you for a suggestion. Oh, okay. So it just doesn't work. Yeah, I knew. I knew, I kind of thought that mechanic was in there. So. Okay. Well, that's my turn then. So we'll go to uh, to Brito. Brito pulls a weapon out, and Brito pulls out a uh, like a rusty scimitar, and he turns towards you, actually, Curlyoa, and he slashes. And he doesn't look like he's very good with the weapon, but he kind of caught you off guard as he hit you, and you're going to take some well, slashing. Well, actually. Damage. Actually, I'm going to uh, shield, use shield. Sure, not a problem at all. Which will, will negate uh, the attack. Take the, uh, yeah, I'll take the four damage off for you. So as you, as you cast the bubble around you, and it kind <laughs> of ripples it, the goblin kind of looks at you, and his eyes get big, and 
He goes, ooh, shiny. And then he goes down to his knees, and, he, and it's like he's starting to kind of like bow towards you and bow to you. Shinies! And the other <laughs> goblin's just standing there going, what in the hell are you doing? So one Raven? of them speaks common, but the other one doesn't. Okay. No, well, it it says shiny. I mean, it doesn't mean that it you know it speaks oh. common or anything. But Brito is so, prone, so if you want to go in and smash Brito, uh, you would get a bonus because he is prone. I mean, yeah, well, he is down on his knees, so he's basically considered prone. So, so Graven is going to. I mean, he's above these guys, right? He is, yeah. He's one one level above the uh, the goblins, yes. So he basically grabs onto the rope and swings directly down onto Brito's head. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so what what kind of check would that be? Would that be a? I would say it would be what a maybe a graceful dexterity type of uh, check as you're sliding down the rope and whatnot. Sure. We'll say you're up <laughs> 10 feet. Oh, I always love that kind of stuff. So let's see if you can... Uh, well, we'll set it with a DC of 10. Nothing nothing that's going right. to be that difficult. Let's see what happens. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'd love to give you that one. Oh, you, you triple lend in it. Nice! You like three, three twirls as you land on your feet. So he Thank comes down with, on his, with his boots on top of Brito's head. Oh. Silver Coffin, thanks for the follow. Thanks for following the channel. Wow, that is crazy. You land on top of Brita's head, and it's like stepping on a watermelon. It just... <laughs> brains and all that stuff just splatter everywhere. Uh, and uh, he looks at... Park uh, uh, and, like, with that... You know, raised eyebrow of your next. You've got his attention <laughs> as you, you know, as you like land and land gracefully, and then you kind of like get up, you know, off of your knees. Raven like stuff. pulls his warhammer out. He's like, uh -uh. yeah, he All just right, he sets his he sets his scimitar very gingerly down <laughs> on the ground, and he just puts his hands up. May not see him. <laughs> 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 I'm done. All right. So we're going to get back to you guys in the temple. So, uh, Thilo, you wanted to go to the inn. You know, this inn yes. is called the it is called the Nightstone Inn. And you know, there is a iron sign outside with the inn's name and it's hanging and kind of squeaking a little bit as the town is just totally silent. Now, as you're walking up towards the inn, you can also see that there's a well here and a, a huge hole that's behind you right here. A massive yeah. hole. And all of a sudden, you start to hear a growling sound. You don't know where it's coming from, Philo, but you do hear a growling sound, and you also hear the sound of what would be like a flesh ripping off of the bone, and something like a teeth that is just sawing on a bone, just gnawing on bone. But you are there at the, the castle, but you can hear that. And the door of the the Nightstone Inn is closed. All right, but I'm not I'm not sure where the sound is coming from. No, uh, give me a perception check. All right. Yeah, give me give me a perception check. Um, why don't I forget where perception check is? Uh, it should be on the second tab where the the skills are. That's right. There we go. Ah, very nice roll. It sounds like it's around the corner of the building over here. Whatever it is. And then once in a while you can hear a... Rawr, rawr, like there's a couple of these things kind of fighting over something. 
Okay, yeah, so when you say around the corner, you mean the, yeah, where the yeah. number is, not where the arrow is pointing? So the yeah, other around the corner, yeah. So it would probably okay. be somewhere in the vicinity of the building about right here. So, But definitely not, okay. within, not within sight. But you can definitely hear it, though. That's for sure. All right, well, clearly the inn is safe. I will go in. Okay. <laughs> you will go into the inn. So, you know, the, the door is open. The welcome mat welcomes you right in. And... I'm going to put you into the inn. So, you are here and there's a lot of damage inside of this uh inside of this inn, Thilo. All right, so I'm going to share this to you. I am going to put you here at the door. And as you move in, this is like a uh, a dining room. And it looks like, and sort of like a, like a check-in area as well. And this room is just strewn with wreckage. There is a giant rock, like you've seen all throughout the courtyard, and coming into Nightstone, there is a rock, and you look up, and there is a giant hole in the ceiling above you, and it's crashed through the, you know, not only the ceiling but the second floor to where it's embedded, and it's just nothing but. You know, daytime sky above you. And everything is just destroyed here. And it's destroyed. A dining table, some long benches. You know, there's even the remains of a bed and a wardrobe chest from the, the room above you that's lying among all this shattered furnishings on this floor. There's also uh, a couple of smaller round tables that have chairs around them. They're the, about the only things that have actually remained intact here. And resting on top of these tables is an oil lamp. So if that has any, you know, if, if you want a lamp, go for it. There's nobody here to stop you. But you also notice one thing. You notice that there is, as you're kind of like, whoa, what the hell happened here? And you're surveying the scene there is a dead goblin that is lying on his back with a crossbow bolt that is sticking out of its chest and it's dead and it's you know it is something killed it um can i do maybe like a survival check or something to get a guess how long ago that happened Oh, I would. Is. Oh, I would. I would love for you to do that. Good idea. Give your give yourself an inspiration for that too. For that idea. Good job. So yeah, your your check probably reveals that this goblin has been dead for probably about twelve hours or so. And but you do what you do notice about this is the bolt is basically embedded directly into the heart of the goblin. So it was a, a precision strike. I mean it was a it was a precision strike, that's for sure. Okay. Um I'm guessing it probably came from upstairs. Does it look that way or mm, that you're not really able to tell because the goblin's over okay. about right about right here. So it wouldn't unless Unless the goblin fell, bounced off of the boulder, and kind of tumbled, you know, ten feet and rolled to where it's mm -hmm. resting now, but it doesn't seem likely. It looks like okay. it was probably killed, killed on this floor. Okay. And then um, you know, over here, okay. there's a uh, there's a door that is going to another uh, another area of the hotel, and it's to the north. And you can also see that there is a stairwell that ascends up to the second story. Of the end. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll head over to the stairwell if you want to cut back to the temple and okay. see what happens there. All right. So give me a give me a quick medicine check, real quick. Because you, okay. you're, you're kind Is that of for uh, me. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Uh, no, hang on. I'm a I'm a halfling. I get yeah. to go again. I like it. I was just. I was just fixing to give go. you one of those. Oh, very nice. So as you kind of look at the wound again, Philo, you're thinking, mm -hmm. holy crap. Because you were, you know, using survival skill. and But you notice, you're like, holy crap, that actually, that you know, you kind of pat the blood, and the body's actually still warm. So it, it maybe, 
only have been a couple minutes since this goblin's been killed. Probably, I'd say, you, you would think now, probably even 15 minutes or so, if that. Okay, I'm still going in my instinct that whoever shot the goblin is upstairs, because that's where I would go. That's that's a, a good observation. And you can still hear these, you know, these, uh, whatever these creatures are, you know, ripping meat off of, but you can still hear them kind of fighting over it too outside. Yeah, as long as they're outside. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go back to the, to the other guys real quick. All right. So, uh... What are you guys doing over here in the in the temple, the temple of Lathander? What do you guys? Well, think? since uh, this goblin, he seems to he, he said he put his uh, his scimitar down. He did, yeah. He he definitely put it down. I kind of looked at my compatriots. Uh, see, uh, any of you speak goblin? <laughs> and I'll kind of uh, step menacingly to this uh, towards the goblin, and I say, common. This goblin's still down on his knees, and he just kind of gives you the the dog look that kind of tilts its head and and just shakes its head like no common, no. I smash it with my warhammer. Oh my god! I love it. <laughs> god, I love it. You uh, hit him, and I will do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll, I'll do. Oh, you uh, kill just him. Kind of just knock him out. I'll just knock him out. Okay, you're gonna hold the blow. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you smash him. His eyes get big as you draw your hammer back. You hit him. Bam! He goes unconscious. Okay. He's out. He's out for the count. <laughs> and that's what you get for not being bilingual. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, tie him up real quick with some rope as I sure search him. Okay, you search him. There is a, there is a little bit of a, there is a little bit of loot. They, each one of them has a a, a sack, and actually these you know these sacks kind of fell with them. I guess they were attached to their belts or whatever. And inside of these packs, not a whole lot of coin. There's a right around forty copper. There uh, was also uh, twenty silver pieces. And there's a couple of items as well. There is a uh, like a a vial, and it is a uh, just like a regular empty vial. There is a uh, an incense block. Well, there's actually three empty vials, and three incense blocks for prayer and whatnot. Uh, then there's also a, a holy symbol of Maliki. I'll grab that stuff up. All right. So let me add this stuff to the party sheet. I'm doing all this as as we go. All right. Great thing about Fantasy Grounds. I can just add everything as we go and divvy it up later. All right. So you found uh, their loot. You found a little bit of coin. Not much. But you have this symbol, some blocks of incense, smell really good, and three empty vials. All right, and I guess uh, if there's nothing else in here, uh, like no other rooms or anything, let's uh, head back outside. Okay, sure. And and you get the you get you know the goblin tied up and all that stuff. All right. So how about uh, Curly? Uh, what about you? Uh, I'm just gonna follow them. Okay. How about Graven? Um. Hmm. Hmm. Grave is going to search around this area and see if uh, there was anything else of interest inside the temple. Okay. Give me so. an investigation uh, check. And that symbol of Maliki is, is shaped like a unicorn's head, by the way. And it looks like it would be probably worth about, about 25 gold or so. Oh, that's a that's a nice ro nice roll, Graven. I mean, you look under you know all of the all of the benches and whatnot, and you don't you don't see anything uh, except you know you even climb up there and it's a large bronze bell. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, there's really yeah there's really nothing nothing else of any kind of value in here or no other clues or whatnot. Okay, when he's done with that, uh, Graven is going to go ahead and exit the temple. Uh, and see where everybody else went to. Okay. 
<clears throat> All right, so you guys head back out to uh, to the main courtyard area. I'll put you guys back on the map over here. Let's move you guys. Can I move you guys from there? I can. Awesome. There we go. And remember, you got the the goblin. It is uh, unconscious and tied up in the in the temple in the back room. Okay, so you guys are are going to be around here. All three of you. Uh, Thilo's not around. I don't know. Thilo, did you say that you were checking out the the inn? Or I don't think so. They disappeared into the temple and. Yeah, you just. I don't think you said anything. Yeah, I think you just kind <laughs> of. Yeah, you just kind of stormed off, but you don't see Thilo anywhere. You know, you see all these boulders in the in the where, uh, the court. Where did the halfling go? Mm -hmm. yeah, where did the, where the small name. one go? Where, wherever halflings go. Where do halflings go? That's 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 a good do, question. Did it, do they normally go? <laughs> <laughs> well, they eat. <laughs> yeah. No sign of the halfling anywhere. I'm pretty sure I went around the corner of the inn, not in the inn, around the corner. <laughs> definitely, definitely go around the corner. Yeah, this whole area is muddy. Lots of, you know, boulders sticking out of the ground, and these things are sticking out about, about five feet out of the ground. These are just massive boulders, you know, three to five feet. Well, if it's muddy, then it should be pretty obvious. Yeah. Which way? Halfling size feet walk. There's a covered well. You should look around for that. This is a covered well here, where the line is. Over here is a a ten foot wide hole. Can I can I see where the footprints lead? Sure, there's there's all kind. You know, you do notice that there are all kinds of small footprints about the size of goblins. Weird. And there's they're kind of I, I pattering all over the place. The halfling ran this way, then he came back and he ran that way, then he came back and he ran that way, <laughs> came back and ran that way. I'll let you uh, about get, ten times. <laughs> give me a give me a give me a perception check, Curly Hello. He's been all over the place. Yeah, give me, give I me a perception check. Right before check. I asked that. But, uh, right. uh, oh, there it is. Oh, nice. 20. No, I'm going to take that one. That's a good one. And you're lucky I'm taking that one. I just didn't <laughs> look into the chat. I know you guys love to... I know players love to do all kinds of roles and really don't even say anything. They just start throwing roles up in the internet, and I guess I'm supposed to have some kind of magical power that uh, is <laughs> what I'm... What is this role for? But All right, so your perception role. You do notice that yep. there are some footprints. They're a little bit larger, probably about the size of a halfling, and they're kind of heading over towards what appears to be the inn. And then there is a, a metal sign that it's you know very quiet where you're at. And you hear this squeaking. Okay. The sign swinging I point back to and the forth. Inn and I say, I think he went into the inn. Oops, Welcome let's go that way. to the Nightstone <laughs> Inn. Oh. Yes. Uh, this I is this is the night center yeah, in here. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can see that there is a a door on the western side. There's also uh, an entrance here, and then you know the entrance over here on the west hand side. On the west Roger's side. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. That's a, I don't think that's a door. That's more of a like a window. Like an awning oh, for the. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll head to here. I'm going by the the dirt roads where the dirt roads lead. All roads lead to the night stone inn. Oh well, in that case, I'll go up to to this entrance. Yeah, sure. yeah wherever yeah. his uh, his feet. <laughs> whatever. They go to way. yeah. They go to the front door basically. <laughs> Sorry, you just said the inn. I just walked for the inn. Yeah. That's I'm my hillbilly. Going. That's my hillbilly. It's the inn. It's the inn. <laughs> inn. <laughs> you know? I, I don't know Ian. Ian, but I want to go into the tavern. <laughs> God. All right, so you head in. You you do head into. Well, it's not the tavern, but you head into uh, where the inn is. All right, so now I'm looking, and there's no door on the inn, but we're gonna make a door on the inn, <laughs> and you guys uh, start to appear, and the door opens up behind you, so it kind of. Uh, kind of freaks you out a little bit as you're starting to uh, ascend up the stairs and then the door swings open and here comes the, the three amigos barging in. 